worship the Lord in this place this morning. Because our God deserves the worship. Because our God deserves the praise. Because there is no one like our God. He's the reason that we've come to this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just lift up your hands and just bless his name. Come on, let's just let's take a minute and just worship him. We did not come for a show, but we came to meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who sits upon the throne of heaven. He's the God Almighty. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, somebody just bless his name. Father, we give you praise, oh God. You deserve the praise. You deserve the worship. Come on, somebody just bless his name. Come on, lay every burden before him this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we just bless your name. Lord, we give you praise. We, we give you praise, almighty God. We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Because why? Because he knows the, what he's going to put inside of you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You should never forget that. That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took time to create you. God took his time because he knows what he's put inside of you. So much grace. So much mercy. I bless God for every woman in the house this morning, this afternoon. Come on, let's put our hands together for the mothers. And the mothers to be, hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. God is good. So this morning, we're going to continue on the power of vision. Somebody said the power of vision. How many of us was, were blessed? Yes, last week. Amen. The power of vision. Vision is very important. Remember from, from the things that we spoke about? Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this morning we're going to continue on 
the power of vision. Somebody said the power of vision. The power of vision. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to, we're going to look into the scripture this morning. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. It says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. That means that they cannot be taken back. God has blessed you and God has given you a gift. That means it cannot be taken back. Also, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship. Somebody say workmanship. Workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has created you for good works. Not for bad works, for good works. Are we not excited about that? Amen. Which God has prepared before time that you should walk in them. Also Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. He says that the purposes of a person's art are deep waters but one who has insight draws them out. One who has insight will draw them out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the source of vision. Why are we talking about vision? Vision is very important. Because you will not discover your purpose until you become your, until you have the vision of what God has placed in you. Everything that God wants to do through you, he has already completed. Somebody say completed. Completed. God has completed everything. You know, God is not waiting for, you know, when, when God brought you to the planet of Earth, he's, he's, he's not saying, he's not like, oh, oh, well, my, my, this person is just, is, is born, then what, what is he supposed to do? God completed you before he even formed you. Amen. And he has put everything that you need to make an impact. He has put it in you. Somebody praise the Lord. He says, I am finished. I have finished the work in you. But you know what is good about God? He wants you to draw it out. The gifts. He wants you to draw it out. Because you are so much filled. If you would understand what God has done for you. When God created you. He has put so much in you. And it needs you to stir up your gift. It needs you to see it, that the work is already completed. Amen. Amen. I said the work is already completed in you. Amen. So vision is the foresight with insight based on hindsight. Amen. I say it again. Vision is foresight. It is also the ability to judge correctly what is going to happen. Vision is foresight. Somebody say it's foresight. It's foresight. With insight, the capacity to gain an accurately, to, to gain an accurate and deep intuitive understanding of a thing. That is what it is. And with hands, eyesight. Understanding the situation only after the event has occurred. And that is what God is. That is what vision is. Insight. Foresight with insight. Based on an insight. The completion, everything we are talking about, God has completed the work. Amen. 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 When, when God speaks, he doesn't speak from the from this from, from, from the from the position of oh what am I gonna do? No. When he speaks, he speaks in completion. He has completed the work. He speaks with the end in mind. Knowing that he has already completed the work in you, are you not excited about it? God has already completed the work in you. Amen. Amen. That is why we just need to be excited about God. And that is why we need to stay focused on God. Because, because God has completed the work. 
You know, sometimes, I mean, if God would just open our eyes, and I think, I mean, if we would just trust God, amen, amen. and not be fearful, when God says, all things are working for your good, believe God, yes. amen. amen, you need to be able to stand on the word of God, and when God says, I, in all things, you are more than a conqueror, believe God, somebody said, believe God, believe God. Because faith is the substance of things hopeful. It is the evidence of things not seen. When God says that you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, believe God. Somebody said believe God. Believe God. You need to believe God. Don't let anybody tell you that you are less than who you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to know that you are a royal priesthood. Amen. You are a holy nation. Amen. Amen. You are a peculiar people. Amen. 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 Are you not excited yes, about that? I'm excited. Because I can rest on God. I can rest on God. I can sleep better knowing that God is with me. Amen. Amen. You need to be able to sleep better. No one that the Bible says. It says, it says, it says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Tell your neighbor you have a sound mind. You have a sound mind. Come on, tell the neighbor that you have an eyeball to eyeball. Come on. Tell them that you have a sound mind. Yes, you have a sound mind. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. That means you can do anything that you put your mind to and by the help of God. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Even men might say, oh, it is impossible, but with God, we know that all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited about God. Hallelujah. Let's, let's put our hands together for the most high God. Hallelujah. Amen. The God that has called you will complete the work. Woo! You don't have to, you don't have to be afraid. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not. Somebody say, Fear not. Fear yeah. not. Be not be dismayed. I am with you. How many of you know God is with you? Amen. Oh, only one person. Huh? Only. How many of you know that God is with you? That is whatever. Whatever you're going through, God, God has already completed the work. He is with you. That is why you do not need to be afraid. Because with God, you are a majority. When people tell me you are the wife, people say, oh, you're nothing, or no, no, you tell them I am something, amen. amen. When people are saying, oh, you do not look, you don't look a certain way, you tell them I am made in the image of God, amen. 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 You, you tell yourself I am beautiful, yes. amen. amen. You say I am beautiful, no matter what people say to you. Say I am beautiful. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because when God made me, he said I am good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When God made you, he said, oh, when he said he looked at you and he said, Woo! Yep. It's good. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what you need to know. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So the first thing in fulfilling your reason for existence is to realize that you have been given a vision. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have been given a vision. You have been given a task to do. Given by God. So as we continue to this, this afternoon, I'm going to start about the keys of understanding vision. Yes, vision is good. Remember we said vision is foresight and with insight based on hindsight. Oh, that is all given. But we need the keys. Amen. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. The kingdom is, 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 is all about having the keys of the kingdom. So vision comes from purpose. Number one, vision comes from purpose. 
God is an author of vision, and it is his nature to be purposeful in everything he does. When God made you, he made you purposely because he had a purpose, then he made you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Do we understand that? God had a purpose. He, he needed something to be done. He had the purpose, he had the plan. Then after he has completed that, he said, I need someone to be able to do it. And he, and he made you. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is a God of purpose. Every time God appeared on the scene of human history, it is because he wanted something specific accomplished. And he walked through people to make it happen. When he needed, when he needed, he, 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 he needed the, 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 the human race, he created the first man. When he needed to redeem them, he brought Jesus. There was a purpose. Jesus did not just come to the earth just for coming sake. He came so that you would have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. God's purpose is eternal. No wonder the Bible says in, in, in Psalm chapter I mean, Psalm 33, verse 11, it says, it says, the plan of the Lord stands firm forever. God's plan for you stands firm. Nothing can change it unless you do not abide and unless you do not grab a hold of it. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24, the Lord Almighty has sworn, surely I have planned it. So it will be. So no matter what man says, God has said it, and faithfully will do it. Is he who will do it? Amen. Amen. No matter if man says, "Oh, I'm closing the, this door," God is going to open the door. Amen. Amen. God is going to open the door even when man shuts it against him, because He is the God that shuts a door and no man can open, and He opens a door. No man can shut. If God be for us, who can be against us? That is why you need to be confident in this thing, knowing that you are a child of a most high God. So God created you with a purpose. God created, so say to yourself, God created me for a purpose. I am not an accident. Amen? You are not an accident. You might have been a surprise to your parents, <laughs> but you're not a surprise to God. Amen? Amen. Are you not excited about that? Yeah. You are not a surprise. You are not a surprise. God brought you into this time T, in this part of eternity, because he has the work that he wants to do through you. He has the purpose that he wants to fulfill through you. That is why he's saying, look, not, not just look, see. See what I have put in you. Man, if we will just understand that, you will transform your, your, your existence in God. Everyone was created to serve a unique purpose. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. He says, just as he chose you in him, before the foundation of the earth. That is why I know that God completed the work in you before the foundation, before he even, before he said, let there be light. God has completed you. Amen. 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 So then why, why are we anxious? Why are we anxious? We need to stand in that confidence. Yeah. Knowing that God has already completed the work. And you know, you know, he completed the work in the spirit. And he, he completed the work in the spirit and, and he, he's, he's just bringing it to manifestation in the physical for you. God has already completed it. Amen. Amen. That's why you, you, just need, you, need, you just need to rest on God. Knowing that faithful is he that has called you and faithful is he because he has completed the work. Amen. And we need to live in this confidence that God has completed everything. I want you to say, say, say this to you about yourself. Say, God created me. God created me. 
God created me. Come on, say it like you mean it. God created me. For a purpose. For a purpose. And he will bring that purpose to pass. Bring that purpose to pass. I believe that. I believe that. I am not a mistake. Come on, say I am not a mistake. I am not a mistake. And I know. And I know that my life is significant. That my life is significant. Amen. Amen. God created me to do something. God created me to do something. Amen. 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 And no one else, no one else, and no one else can do it, can do it. but me. Listen, right. come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Because the Lord has created you for a purpose. And no one can do that purpose except you. That is why you don't be, don't copy, don't copy. Just do what God has called you to be. Bring out the gift and the talent in you. To everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose. There's time, there's a season and a time, and it makes all things beautiful in its time. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. God has placed his eternal purpose in you. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 chapter 3 verse 11 it says he also has set eternity in the heart of man can you believe it and it's going to take eternity for you to, to even, for you to even have a grasp you know God is so he so, has put so much in you that it takes eternity to bring out what God is, has put in you amen amen and God puts it in you, and he wants you to, for, 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 from time after time, to reveal it, amen, in you. How many of you know we live in a time and space? But time and space are connected to eternity, and God has put something in your heart that calls the unseen into the same. Amen. 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 You need to understand that this morning. And call those things that be not as though they were. Number three, your purpose is complete, already completed in God. Your purpose is already completed in God. Isaiah chapter 4, 46. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 to 10. It says, I am God. And there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make the known, I make known the end from the beginning. Can you believe that? He has completed the word. So you need to just rest in him. From ancient times, what is still to come? And I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do as I please. Amen. God's purpose is going to stand in your life. Amen. I said God's purpose is going to stand in your life. Amen. 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 If only you knew, you just need to hold on to that. Because God established the end from the beginning. Your purpose is established before production. Do you know that? Your purpose, before God created you, he's already established your purpose. God first institutes the purpose, then he creates someone or something to fulfill that purpose. Praise the Lord. Amen. When God starts something, he has already completed it in eternity. Yeah. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? He has already completed the work in eternity. <coughs> amen. Just like in builder, when you when it's just, it's just like when you're about to build a thing, you 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 develop an idea, you make a blueprint, then you start building. You plan first. So God completed it before even before he even created you. So I want you to be confident in that. That you are already fitting everything that God asked for you is already is already completed. Praise the Lord. So we need to understand this this morning. We need to know this about our purpose. That your beginning, because you're on the planet Earth, your beginning is proof of your completion. Amen. Amen. 
So it's not about, oh, can, uh, uh, am I going to be able to do this? What, the things that God has placed in my heart. No, God is saying that you're, because he brought you to this planet Earth, that means what he wants to do through you, he had already completed it. How many of you know you are not an experiment? Yes. <laughs> you are not an experiment. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a person of purpose. God would not, have, would, not, would not have allowed you to start your life and your purpose unless they are already completed in eternity. You are not an experiment. And purpose is when you know and understand that you were born or what you were born to accomplish. Somebody praise the Lord. So to have vision is to have vision about what God has called you to be. Purpose is therefore the source of your vision, your vision about God. Your purpose existed before you did. Whatever you were born was accomplished by God before you arrived on the scene. He ordained your birth to carry it out. Can you, can you, are you not excited about that? God ordained you. He ordained, he said, I need this X, Y, Z, and I need you to be created, to accomplish it. That is what God has done. He has already completed the work. You are not an experiment. Proverbs chapter 19, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. It says, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord purpose that will prevail. The Lord's purpose will prevail in your life. Amen. I said the Lord's purpose will prevail in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, you need to understand the component to understanding your vision. Number one is that you need to know, already know that, you're, that you already know your vision. You might say, oh, Lord, I mean, what is my vision? I, I don't know. You tell me. No. I'm not going to tell you because God already put it in you. Amen. Amen. God has already put it in you. You just need to draw it out. Amen. Somebody say, draw it out. Yeah. To find your vision, you need to look within yourself. Don't look at Hollywood. Don't look at, don't look at, at, the, at, at the next person. Look within yourself. Amen. I don't have anything against Hollywood. If God has put you there, he has put you to be the light in that place. Amen. 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 I mean, the children of God need to know that they are light in darkness. Amen. Amen. And God will always, wherever you find yourself, irrespective of where you find yourself, know that you are light in the, in, 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 in the dark world. So look within yourself. Somebody say, look within myself. Because God has placed it in there. Your vision, how do you understand your vision? Your vision is close, is as close as your deepest desire. Amen, do we get that? Your vision is as close as your deepest desire. Why? The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4, it says, delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. And he will give you what? Desires. Amen. That's it. He will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. God has placed those desires in your life. Don't discount it. There's a gift and there's a talent. There's something within you that you cannot seem to get away from. Develop it. Amen. Don't run away from your gift. Don't run away from your talent. Don't run away from it. God put it there because he wants to make, you know, God, God put those desires in your heart. Why? Because he wants to make sure you find it. Amen. Amen. God puts those desires there because he wants to make sure you find it. Because he knows, he knows that if he puts it in another man's hand, the, the man will keep it and will not let you see it. Amen. That is why God, 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 God hid it in you. He hid it in you. Are you not excited about God? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The gifts and the talents of God, God has he, he hid it in you. He, he, it's a, in the same place. But the Bible says that it is the honor of kings to find it out. How many of you know that you're kings? Amen. Yeah. 
You are kings, no queen. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Because God has put his plan. I'm so excited about it. Because God did not, God placed it in you for safekeeping. I don't know why I'm going back there. God placed it in you. So stop looking for what God's will is everywhere except in yourself. Stop running around trying to say, oh God, what, 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 what is it that you have for me? What is, it, what is your plan? What is your purpose? God is saying, yes, look within you and call it out. Because out of the bellies, out of your bellies are rivers of living waters. Look, everything that you need, everything to you need to, to fulfill your destiny, God has put within you. Amen. 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 How many of you remember last week I talked about God removing the clay? You know, when, when, when you're covered with clay, but there's gold on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. I said there is gold on the inside of you. Amen. All you have to do is allow God to remove that clay. And he removes the clay. And when he removes the clay and you become refined, then the gold and the precious thing within you begins to blossom. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. There is gold. Somebody say there is gold on the inside of me. There is gold on the inside of me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Drive it. Come on, pull it out. Pull it out. So sometimes the ideas might come in multiples. Sometimes you might have so many ideas. I want to do so many things. But each one of them are for different seasons of your life. Amen. Amen. You will be like, oh God, there's so many things I want to do. I want to do A, I want to do B, I want to do C. But, but yes, yes, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. But it is not So you focus on one or two of them yeah. at a time. Develop them. Yeah. Bring it out of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is for different seasons of your life. You, you, I mean, you cannot even complete. I mean, there's a lot of things in, in you that you cannot even complete on. Through our masters, put eternity within you. So you are not saved for the sole purpose of going to heaven. Amen. Amen. If I ask everybody today who wants to go to heaven, how many of us want to go to heaven? <laughs> Amen. 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 What about how many of us want to go now? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen. We don't want to go now. And you're right by saying, I don't want to go now. Because there's still much God wants to do through you. Amen. 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 So God did not save you for the purpose of solely for going to heaven. He saved you so that you will finish your assignment on earth. Amen. Amen. If God does not have an assignment for you, then when you, when you got saved, it would have taken you, it would have raptured you away from the earth. But God did not do that. He says, no, my, your child, my child, I, you are out for a purpose. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you need to discover that purpose. Your vision will persist against all odds. Vision is unselfish. Amen. 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 So if you want to know what your vision is, it cannot be selfish. It can be more than yourself. It cannot be unselfish. Its purpose is to bring about God's kingdom on earth and to turn people to Him. So if your vision is not doing that, oh, my vision is I want to have the best car, I want to drive, you know, I want to fly, and I want no, no, no. All that is about yourself. You need to think more than that. Your vision has to impact the next person. Come on, your vision has to make an impact. Vision is not unselfish. So your vision should always focus on helping humanity or building up others in one way or the other. Amen. Amen. So if you're looking for God's vision within you, begin to, begin to measure it by this. Is my vision unselfish? Is it, is it unselfish or is it selfish? If it's selfish, then it's not about God, it's about you. It needs to be about God. You know, when God had a vision of saving the earth, he had a vision of, for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. His vision was about saving 
humanity. So your vision cannot be unselfish. And finally, your vision requires, requires a vital connection with God. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to accomplish your vision, you need to be connected to God. Come on, somebody say, I need to be connected to God. I need to be connected to God. I need to be connected to God. Your, your vision requires a vital connection with God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, as we close this more this afternoon. It says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to, go, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you need to be connected to God. In God is where your vision is. In God is where you are completed. It is in God where you are complete. Amen. Amen. We are not saved by doing good works, but for the purpose of doing good works. I say that again as we pray this morning. Is that we are not saved by doing good works, but for the purpose of doing good works. Are you doing good works for the Lord? I just want us to, to bow down our head this, this afternoon and begin to pray. You know what, what we said this morning that the purpose of God is already inside of you. Your vision will persist against all odds. I want you to begin to look within yourself. And begin to ask the Lord, is my vision, is it selfish? Is it, is it all about me? God is calling you this morning, this afternoon, and is saying, seek you first my kingdom and my righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you. In the name of Jesus. I need.